Let's bring in our next guest, retired U.S. Army Brigadier General Don Baldock. Um, let's just um, flip to the second part of, of, of that question. We don't quite have time for the for, for to follow up there, which was if the the worst happens, and as the intelligence is being leaked, you know, there's a full-on invasion. You know, what should we do? Well, Steve, thank you, and my best to your viewers. And of course, we're in a a hugely difficult situation right now, and it'll be even more difficult when, uh, if and when mm -hmm. uh, Putin decides to invade either uh, a limited invasion or a full-scale invasion. And so we have no diplomacy, we have no deterrence that, that uh, they've implemented at all. You mentioned peace through strength in the er earlier conversation. We haven't even arrayed our forces, our strategic forces, uh, in the right areas to be able to, to do this. Nobody wants to send ground troops into the Ukraine, but mm -hmm. we have so many other uh, assets that we could use uh, to respond ahead of time to prevent Putin from doing anything. But he's playing a chess game and we're playing a checkers game, and we have such an imbalance in our national security right now uh, between the homeland and, and foreign policy that I think that we need to get ready for the worse. And yes. Is Biden ready to uh, respond to that? No. And Putin knows that. And that's the difference between a chess game and a checker game. Uh, yeah, yes. Um, what about the... I'd, I'd like to ask you what you had in mind with those other resources that you said that could be deployed short of ground troops. I think every, everyone's in agreement. We don't want to see that at all. What, what should have been done? Or, or could still be well, done? I think that we should have had our United States Navy in there. Uh, we have a superb Navy, a strategic Navy that's second to none surface, subsurface air. Uh, he's got his in the Black Sea and in the Mediterranean. We should have doubled down on that. We should have layered our own naval forces in there, our strategic air force. Uh, we also have a number of indirect assets. The other thing that we're doing is we're pulling out our tactical assets on the ground. Special forces. Now, I've been retired for four years, but I've served with these guys. I've led these guys. I know what they can do when it comes to stay behind operations in case of an invasion. I know what they can do to prepare the civilian defense forces. And I, knew what, I know what they can do to advise, assist uh, a company, uh, train and equip the Ukrainian forces to take the fight even more lethal mm -hmm. uh, to, to Russia. The Ukrainians are going to fight. They're brave. They will fight. They're not like uh, Afghanistan or any other place that we have been in. They will hold the line. We need to back them up, and we're just not there to back them up because, like I said, we're playing a checkers game. They're playing a chess yes. game. We're not mat We're overmatched in the policy and strategy area here, and they know it. Well, let's talk about that because the one thing that's really struck me from the beginning of this whole crisis as, as, as we've seen it unfold is this way in which we, we've seen extraordinarily detailed intelligence leaked. People are so skeptical and suspicious about all of this, given the history over the past kind of um, in the in the recent past. And it seems to me like they, the Biden, you know, people they think this is on a new, like I said, a new type of warfare. They and in fact, in this New York Times piece today, they're saying they're very proud of it. They think, you know, Putin plays this game with information and so on. And now they're they're playing the, the Putin's game, and they're going to beat him. I think it's tremendously risky because actually, you're dealing with a very unpredictable character. And by constantly putting things out into the public domain, it might actually provoke Putin. What do you make of it? Well, I, I agree with you, and. First of all, Putin respects strength, uh, and the congresswoman had it perfect. They weren't going to mess with President Trump, and and that's a fact. I, you know, I was serving as a general officer. They messed with, they messed with uh, the Obama administration, and now they're messing with the Biden administration. Right. They have no respect for our national security team writ large, whether it's the leadership in Department of Defense, sec, uh, the Department of State, or the national security team. They look at Afghanistan. I mean, exactly. I mean, we embolden China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran uh, to such an extent that they are they are not even worried about you know what we're going to do. And this characterizing this as anything but Putin, Putin massing his troops under his most qualified general, under his most ruthless general, uh, to do a, a cross-border invasion and not look at it in those terms is a huge mistake. And, and to play games like you're, you're, you know, you're, you're you know, more clever than the other guy. This is straight up yes. blocking and tackling. There's nothing complicated about it. 
and they're weak, they're, they're, they're ineffective leaders, and that's, what he, that's how he's going to beat us. Well, there you are. I mean, I'm afraid that that all sounds all too true. Uh, but General Baldock, as always, um, great to have you with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.